Ruthie, tall skinny lady with red lipstick and blue babushka, one blue sock and one green because she forgot, is the only grown up we know who likes to play. She takes her dog Bobo for a walk and laughs all by herself, that Ruthie. She doesn't need anybody to laugh with, she just laughs. She's Edna's daughter, the lady who owns the big building next door, three apartments front and back. Every week Edna is screaming at somebody, and every week somebody has to move away. Once she threw out a pregnant lady just because she owned a duck. And it was a nice duck too. But Ruthie lives here, and Edna can't throw her out because Ruthie is her daughter. Ruthie came one day, it seemed, out of nowhere. Ahel Vargas was trying to teach us how to whistle. Then we heard someone whistling, beautiful like the Emperor's Nightingale. And when we turned around, there was Ruthie. Sometimes we go shopping and take her with us, but she never comes inside the stores, and if she does, she keeps looking around her like a wild animal in the house for the first time. She likes candy. When we go to Mr. Benny's grocery, she gives us money to buy her some. She says make sure it's the soft kind because her teeth hurt. Then she promises to go see the dentist next week, but when the next week comes, she doesn't go. Ruthie sees lovely things everywhere. I might be telling her a joke and she'll stop and say, the moon is beautiful like a balloon. Or somebody might be singing and she'll point to a few clouds. Look, Marlon Brando, or Sphinx winking, or my left shoe. Once some of Edna's friends came to visit and asked Ruthie if she wanted to go with them to play bingo. The car motor was running and Ruthie stood on the steps wondering whether to go. Should I go, Ma? She asked the gray shadow behind the second floor screen. I don't care, says the screen. Go if you want. Ruthie looked at the ground. What do you think, Ma? Do what you want. How should I know? Ruthie looked at the ground some more. The car with the motor running waited 15 minutes and then they left. When we brought out the deck of cards that night, we let Ruthie deal. There were many things Ruthie could have been if she wanted to. Not only is she a good whistler, but she can sing and dance too. She's had lots of job offers when she was young, but she never took them. She got married instead and moved away to a pretty house outside the city. Only thing I can't understand is why Ruthie is living on Mango Street if she doesn't have to, why she's sleeping on a couch in her mother's living room when she's a real house all her own. But she says she's just visiting and next weekend her husband's going to take her home. But the weekends come and go and Ruthie stays. No matter. We are glad because she is our friend. I like showing Ruthie the books I take out of the library. Books are wonderful, Ruthie says, and then she runs her hand over them as if she could read them in braille. They're wonderful, wonderful, but I can't read them anymore. I get headaches. I need to go to the eye doctor next week. I used to write children's books once. Did I tell you? One day I memorized all of the walrus and the carpenter because I wanted Ruthie to hear me. The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. Ruthie looked at the sky and her eyes got watery at times. Finally, I came to the last lines. But answer came there, none. And this was scarcely odd, because they'd eaten every one. She took a long time looking at me before she opened her mouth, and then she said, You have the most beautiful teeth I have ever seen, and went inside. <laughs>